My neighbor was in my attic. So around 10 to 12 years ago in England, I lived in a little two bedroom house on a long road. It is a terraced house on a long strip of other terraced houses. Back in the day, all the attics were joined and you could literally travel through them. Years later, they realized it was a bad idea. Fires spreading, burglars, etc. And so all the attics were bricked up so each house was secure. One night I was soaking in the bath when I heard a noise above me. Thinking it may be an animal or something, I just ignored it. This went on for a few weeks, only it was getting to the point I would only hear the noise when I was in the bath or the shower or getting changed. I got a friend to check the attic and he told me he didn't see anything. He just stuck his head inside, which confirmed my animal story. Not much happened after that for about a month or two. When one night I was alone, I was getting ready to take a shower, and as I was heading out with friends, I heard the same noise above, when all of a sudden the dogs started going crazy, barking and looking directly above me. Clearly I was freaked out and decided to get ready at a friend's house. The next day I was outside my house when the neighbor shouted to me, Now my neighbor is creepy as hell, small, stinky, strange looking with a hint of crazy in his eyes. He asked if I was okay. Being polite and trying to show him he doesn't really bother me, I said yes and went about my business. Just as I got to my door, he asked if I got to my friends okay. At first, without thinking, I said yes, thank you, and smiled and waved goodbye. When I got inside my house, I realized that he could not know I was at my friends unless he heard me on the phone, and as I was so creeped out the night previously, I was practically whispering to my friend. Anyway, I rang family members, told my dad and they all came around. They turned the lights on in the bathroom, but kept all the other lights off. Opened the attic door and you could see two lights shining right through the top of the attic. Two little holes. My bathroom ceiling was quite dark so I never noticed them. My dad went in. He was gone a while and when he returned he was blazing angry. He ignored everyone and walked straight outside to the neighbor's house. We heard him shouting for the neighbor to open the door, but he was not at home. I asked my cousin to go up and check it out. When he came back down, he told me that the walls separating the attics had been knocked through. Most of the brickwork was on my side, so it had been knocked through from the other side. We called the police, but they told us there was no proof he had done anything. The neighbor told the police he never used the attic and the previous tenants may be to blame. Clearly he was to blame the old dirty pervert. I don't think I have ever been so disturbed knowing that the dirty pervert had been watching me for all that time. I never stayed in that house again. Creepy bald guy. This incident occurred last night. Also, I'm a teenage girl if that matters. It was around 6.30 and just getting dark. It's winter here, and I was leaving a friend's house to return home for dinner. I usually walk home a lot later. I roughly get to my friend's house at 8 p.m. and leave around 10 through midnight. My friend lives in the part of town where all the housing commission is. This means lots of druggos, low-income families, and a lot of Indian and Middle Eastern families. As you leave my friend's house, you exit her cul-de-sac and walk down the longest street that turns into a T intersection. Both sides of the road leading up to the T have paved footpaths and both are very, very dimly lit. I usually walk on the left side, which is also usually the brightest side, seeing as I have to turn left when I get home. For those that need help visualizing how this took place, I roughly drew a map. The purple is me and the red is the man. As I was walking towards the T intersection, up above on the opposite side of the road in the shadows, I could see the silhouette of someone slowly walking the direction I was coming from. I'm usually very attentive when I walk home, thanks to all the stories on this subreddit. 
so I noticed him right away and probably a lot earlier than he realized. The person walking then crossed the road on the same footpath I was on, but he had turned around and his back was facing me as if he was walking back towards the intersection. I could see the man. He was short, Middle Eastern looking, bald, and wearing a tracksuit. And as he reached the pavement in front of me, he kept looking back at me and slowing down until we were almost next to each other. I noticed I had at least a couple inches on the man and was bigger in comparison to him. I'm roughly 5'7", 180 pounds. He looked about 5'4 or shorter. I stood back a step and he turned to look at me again, but this time we were face to face and less than a meter apart. Unsure of the man's intentions or if I was being paranoid, I loudly asked, can I help you? He just looked at me kind of shocked stopped and kept watching me as I passed and kept walking. Oh no, I thought you were someone else. As soon as I got to the intersection, I turned left and sprinted the rest of the way home in case he was following me or there was a car or other men waiting around. Not sure if I was mistaken for somebody in a shady drug deal or if he had more sinister plans, but I don't understand why he'd be walking the way I came then cross the street and change direction to end up in front of me. Mom, there's someone under my bed. So after being hooked on this thread for the past few days, I've decided to post my own story from when I was five or six. The story starts in the summer, circa 1990 in a Dallas suburb. As a child, and still today, I was very whimsical and didn't pay much attention to anything that didn't concern me in the moment. It was a summer day, and I was playing in the backyard. My mom had to run some errands, so of course I stalled and waited till she was walking out the door until I finally dragged ass to join her. Did you shut the sliding door? she asked. Not remembering or caring at all, I said yes, and about our day we went. We arrived back home sometime early evening around 6. As we enter the house, the sliding door is wide open. Of course, my mom scolds me, and me, truly not remembering, apologize and go about my business. As the night winds down, my mom tucks me in and goes downstairs to run a bath. So like any five-year-old, the last thing I do is go to sleep. As I lay on my bed with my micro machines and making goofy kid noises, I feel my bed move slightly. I immediately pause and look around. I quickly dismiss it and go about my usual kid business. A few minutes later, the end of my bed lifts up and slams back down. Of course, I did what any five-year-old would do, scream like a fucking banshee. Then in the dark room, my bed starts moving and a shadow slowly tries to rise from the foot of my bed. I stood up and Olympic jumped all the way to the door and met my mom mid-stairs. As I hysterically tell my mom what happened, we run to the kitchen and quietly call 911. We kept it short and ran to the car and waited outside for the police. As we wait, we see my upstairs light turn on, then the hallway, then the stairway. After a minute, the police came screeching in. They flew in the house and searched it to no avail. The cops said we probably walked in as the intruder was trying to rob the place, although nothing was touched or disturbed. Needless to say, I didn't sleep in my room for a month. And now every time I go home at night, I always turn on every light and check every crevice. Thanks a lot, creepy burglar. I hope we do not meet again, because I would beat the shit out of you.